Hello, welcome to this week's Forex Outlook here at XM.com. My name is Rafi Bajan, currency analyst, and here with me is our chief economist, Michalis Florenjadis. Uh, so, Michalis, uh, once again, we had quite a bit of a uh, risk off uh, in the markets uh, this week. We saw a bit of a sell off in commodity linked currencies, which were especially uh, hit hard along with emerging market currencies. So, what were the main drivers? I think the main uh, factor uh, driving uh, this uh, negative sentiment was worry that we are going to see more uh, trade tensions uh, between the US and other countries, particularly uh, China. So this led to uh, a sell-off, as you said, particularly of a currency like the Aussie, because uh, Australia is exporting a lot of commodities to China and maybe fewer exports uh, by China are going to uh, require uh, less commodities, uh, less Australian uh, commodities. Also, the loony was under pressure, although uh, Canada is in negotiations with the uh, United uh, States regarding a revamped uh, NAFTA agreement after the U.S. Uh, reached a deal with uh, Mexico. Uh, also, the Kiwi uh, faced uh, some uh, sell-off as well. So I think these uh, three were the outstanding, uh, the, the biggest losers, let's say, of the, from at least from developed uh, currencies. And we have to particularly stress the volatility that was uh, faced by the British pound, headline-driven vol volatility, headlines related to Brexit. This uh, week uh, saw uh, some uh, big rally, a major rally, the, the, a big jump by the, the pound when there was a, an announcement, not announcement, but a, a Bloomberg headline saying that uh, uh, Germany and uh, the UK were uh, setting aside uh, some of their differences and uh, dropping some of the red lines t uh, uh, on, on some of those issues. So. Uh, this led to rally, but of course there was a, uh, a reaction to that uh, as well. So uh, it makes you wonder. The market is very sensitive to the, this uh, issue, but it's very difficult to reach a, a definite conclusion on what's going to happen. A lot of uncertainty there. Uh, having uh, said that, uh, Rady, what, uh, Rafi, what are we going to see uh, next week? Uh, because uh, the pound is driven more by Brexit headlines, but we have a Bank of England meeting as well. Uh, that's right. We do have a Bank of England meeting, um, but uh, it's not, we're not expecting uh, anything, uh, any surprises from uh, from the Bank of England's announcement next Thursday. Uh, we, of course, last month uh, had uh, that rate hike, um, and so we're not going to have any press conference this time around. Uh, so, like you said, Brexit is the main driver, uh, so we're not going to... We weren't expecting to see much reaction to the Bank of England decision uh, where they're expected to hold interest rates unchanged. We're going to have quite a number of UK data as well prior to the, uh, the Bank of England meeting. We're going to have monthly GDP, industrial production uh, and manufacturing numbers as well as uh, unemployment figures uh, coming up as well. So we could see some volatility uh, to that. Uh, there's also going to be a central bank policy meeting by the European uh, central Bank uh, also on Thursday. Again, we're not expecting any changes, uh, though the ECB will uh, be publishing updated uh, macroeconomic projections. Uh, we could perhaps see some revisions there that um, if they're follow up, followed up by comments by Mario Draghi, perhaps could trigger some volatility to the euro. Um, the euro didn't do too badly this week, uh, so it's going to be interesting to see whether any remarks by Draghi uh, will trigger any fresh uh, sell-offs to the single currency. We're also going to have uh, inflation, retail sales, industrial production numbers coming out of the US. Um, so uh, if the, the data sticks to what we've been seeing uh, recently, they're likely to be uh, on the strong side. Uh, and we're also going to have job numbers out of Australia, plus some other data out of China, such as retail sales, industrial production, and inflation that could also affect the Australian dollar uh, and also could be what could be interesting is revised GDP numbers out of Japan we are expecting an upward uh, revision and that could add speculation that the Bank of Japan uh, is uh, indeed um, doing some stealth tapering uh, as has been some talk of that in the markets recently. It will be interesting for uh, Japan also with the yen 
benefiting from these uh, trade uh, worries and from the risk of sentiment. And also what you mentioned, perhaps the, the, the market is most sensitive to the U.S. data because the U.S. Central Bank, the Federal Reserve, is the only central bank that is realistically going to raise interest rates. Indeed, we are expecting a Fed uh, rate hike in uh, a couple of weeks' uh, time, two and a half weeks when it next uh, meets. So for sure, uh, the data there will affect. Whereas with the UK data, even uh, this week, we had a mixed bag of uh, survey data out of the UK, but the, their effect on the pound was much, much smaller than the headlines uh, regarding uh, Brexit. So that will be interesting. And the same with the Aussie and the RBA, maybe the Aussie much more sensitive to what is happening with the trade dispute. So thank you very much, uh, Rafi, for your input. Thank you everyone for watching and have a great day.